So battery day is coming up uh, the 22nd, which is Tuesday. And um, I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, there's been a leaked uh, picture. Supposedly, a Tesla employee has taken a photo of what appears to be a lithium-ion cell, much larger than the 2170s or the 18650s that were in the previous models of Tesla. Um, and from the picture, assuming it's real, um, the picture, you can see the number 54 on it. Um, it appears to be approximately 54 millimeters in diameter. Um, an 18650L has an 18 millimeter diameter with a 650 millimeter length. The 2170 is a 21 millimeter with 70 millimeter length. And these would be, um, judging from the picture, looking at about, you know, if that is 54 millimeters, which looks about the scale, looks that's like that's about the correct diameter, um, then it's going to be close to 100 millimeters long. So um, the original Model S, when it came out, had the 18650 battery. When they switched to the 2170 battery, they actually got a 50% increase in the energy density. So um, with a battery cell of this size, we're looking at five to seven times uh, of an increase, 500 to 700% increase in energy density, um, which is just mind-boggling. Mind um, the size of these, obviously you can't fit as many of these cells in a uh, battery pack. Um, currently there are around 4,400 uh, cells of 2170 cells in a Model 3, gives you 75 kilowatt hours, almost 80 kilowatt hours. Um, these ones, not even going to be able to get a, a thousand in there, so maybe six, five, six hundred. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Um, what does that mean for uh, energy density? Um, it means that, well, cooling is going to be a lot easier, a lot, a lot less of the material in the battery, for instance, the outer casing is not really usable. Um, that's just the shell holding it on, and then you have less of that. So um, that mass reduction re results in a higher density. Um, they also have the, um, Tesla has the pad for the, uh, the tabless electrodes. So instead of having basically sheets of material that are coiled around into a cylinder and a tab for one electrode and a tab on the opposite for the electrode, um, what that means is that the electrons have to flow in that spiral uh, path all the way till they get to the opposite electron uh, electrode. So it goes into the one side, it's going to spiral around to the outside and then um, make it out the other end of the battery. That produces a lot of heat because of that path they got to take. So um, increases the need for cooling and stuff. Now they have the tabless electrodes. So basically, um, if you can imagine a still uh, a spiral rolled piece of material, um, but now the entire top edge and the entire bottom edge of that spiral are the electrode. So now the electrons can pass straight through without having to go through that spiral pathway. Um, that greatly reduces heat and um, the need for cooling. So uh, all that mass reduction and simpl simplifying of the uh, system that's needed. The first principle engineering's approach is the best part is no part. The best process is no process. Um, the fewer moving parts or the fewer parts you have, the fewer you have, uh, fewer things you have breaking down, the fewer, uh, the lower the expenses are producing it. Um, all those benefits you get from eliminating things out of your process. Now, reducing the number of cells, um, there was an advantage to having more cells. One is that like you have cells go down, cells fail, um, it's not a big deal if you have 4,000 cells and you, and you lose 50 of them. Um, it really doesn't affect you that much. Whereas if you have, you know, 700, you lose 50. Now you've taken a pretty big, a pretty big hit on your um, battery capacity. So fortunately, um, they've gotten a highly reliable battery pack that does not lose um, capacity very much over time. I think people have said that they've seen just um, a few percent um, 
I think after five years, some people are reporting 10% uh, reduction. Um, but most people don't even own their cars for five years anymore, maybe seven years uh, tops. So losing a little bit of your range, um, that's kind of expected. Ice engines also lose range over time too, um, unless you're constantly up on your maintenance, getting them tuned up. And of course, that's going to be a possible option. Uh, there's talk of possibly the bringing back the old plan of battery swaps, um, at least on the Model S's, which hopefully we'll see a redesigned Model S. But um, basically, that's really exciting news. Um, you have um, all kinds of speculation as to what's going on with Tesla and upcoming battery day. Um, I think this leak uh, is legit. Um, there's no one, uh, Elon has not refuted it. Usually some fake, he'll tell us, uh, but he has not refuted it on Twitter or anywhere else. So I think this is a very good sign. Um, the, the level of improvement is going to be massive because right now Tesla's costs, we're looking at close to a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour or yeah, per kilowatt hour storage. Um, I know they've been talking to get that down. A lot of manufacturers have been looking at that magic number of $100 per kilowatt hour. If they can get below that, um, that'd be tremendous. Tesla has been really close. They might be under it just a little bit right now. We don't know for sure. Um, however, I think that this battery cell is actually going to bring it down to about $50 per kilowatt hour or less. Um, no one's going to be able to touch that. No one is even going to come close. I mean, other companies are like, oh yeah, we're, we're aiming for a hundred dollars and they're at 140, you know? Um, so they're really far behind. They're going to have no choice, but to basically license, um, Tesla's technology or buy battery cells from Tesla, which will be good news for us as a shareholder in Tesla. It's a good, good thing. Um, the some of the other things they've talked about are as possible uh, things we're talking about is bringing in uh, a dry cell, um, solid state cell. You know the dry the dry technology, dry electrode technology. So that would make actually make the production costs a lot less as well. Um, it would also shrink the size of the factory considerably. So that could be really good. As it reduces the real estate costs for battery production. Um, I think they're going to look to move battery production to every location that they'll have battery production on at each gigafactory. That's something I'd like to see. Um, and I think it's something that could possibly happen. Um, gets rid of a lot of shipping costs, gets rid of a lot of logistics cost. And um, if you can manufacture your batteries on site and then manufacture the packs, but it also it's great vertical integration. Um, and especially as, um, you eliminate that uh, overseas shipping, which is costly. Um, anytime they do things like this to reduce costs, it's not just incremental. You know, most companies, they do things that are incremental growth, incremental cost reductions. Um, Tesla doesn't think that way, and that's why it's a, it's a tremendous investment. That's why Wall Street doesn't understand it. They say, oh, we don't understand the valuation. They don't understand um, why, so people, why the stock is going uh, vertical as it is. They see, okay, well, you know, it's maintaining this growth curve, but Tesla works for exponential growth. That's what their that's what their goal is. That's what they do. They they think not in gradual or incremental terms. They think in orders of magnitude. So first we're going to go, we're going to double, and then we're going to go ten times, and then we're going to go a hundred times, and then a thousand times. Every time is one order of magnitude um, over the last technology. Um, that is scary to a lot of investors because they see that as something that's uh, too risky. Um, but right now value investing isn't working for most people. They invest in these safe stocks and then they don't go anywhere. They don't, um, they don't make anything. It's basically putting their money into the mattress, hoping that it grows. Um, so that brings us over to SpaceX, which um, they think the same way. And you look how that company has operated. You know, first starting in with the Falcon 1, which was able to carry around 900 pounds of payload to orbit. Um, and it took them a few tries. They hadn't figured it, but that's the one that was a pathfinder to figure out how to get into orbit. And it was able to carry almost 1,000 pounds to orbit. Um, 
after the one successful, um, there's four there's four launches. Um, after the one successful, you got into orbit, and they had one Falcon one left. They could have launched that. They said, nope, we've we're done with Falcon one. They took the remaining one, put it in a made a lawn ornament out of it, and, and stuck it in, made it a museum piece, and they moved on to Falcon nine. Um, Falcon 9 is able to carry 50,000 pounds to orbit. So they went from, you know, 1,000 to 50,000. Um, and Falcon 9 is still flying. Um, already they're working on Starship down in Boca Chica, Texas. Um, that one is going to carry 800 metric tons to moon or to Mars, 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit. Um, so now you've had another order of magnitude more. Uh, uh, step, you know, a bigger step. So that one, and once they get that flying, uh, they have said without a doubt that they will no longer fly Falcon 9s, even though Falcon 9 has, you know, successful, proven itself uh, and its reusability brought the cost way down, um, has gotten human rated, uh, human flight rated by NASA so that we can carry astronauts in it. They're not going to stop there. They're going to move to Starship get that human certified and then decommission Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And those won't fly anymore. Only Starship. Starship, the cost, uh, the flight cost pretty much since it's going to be 100% reusable is only going to be fuel. That's it. Um, the flight process is going to be automated. So we don't need to pay pilots or astronauts to fly the thing. Um, basically fill it up with fuel, about a million dollars in fuel, roughly. Um, and you can fly it, you can go in orbit. So for $1 million, uh, no one can touch it. Um, they're probably, I believe SpaceX is already working on the project that's going to replace the Starship eventually. Um, Starship, you know, they're looking at not just building the Starship, but building the Starship factories. These factories are gonna pump out 100 Starships per year and they're gonna do it for 10 years. They're gonna build a thousand Starships in 10 years. Um, and this is to start colonizing Mars. Um, I believe that the, whatever the next one, call it Starship Heavy, call it Mega Starship, I don't know what it is, but, um, you know, if, if you're asked the average person, uh, what do you think SpaceX will do if, they, you know, they can carry 150 tons to low Earth orbit? Uh, what do you think the next generation uh, Starship will be? Most people say, oh, 200, 250, maybe 500 tons. And that's not how SpaceX thinks. They're looking at, no, we can already carry 115. Let's go 1,500 tons or 15,000 tons to orbit, low Earth orbit on a single launch. Um, every, you know, most engineers will look at that and say, that's crazy. Well, yeah, it is crazy, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. It means it's um, smart. So, and it looks like that um, if that ever if they are working on that, that it's probably going to be something along those lines. Um, most people don't get it, and that's fine. But uh, you know, growth is value. Value growth or value investing is dead. Um, you got to look at uh, growth plays in the in the market. Unfortunately, SpaceX is not available to investors like me. Um, but if it was, I would definitely be buying that. But Tesla is available. Um, with the, you know, and I hope SpaceX does spin off Starlink uh, and then make that um, a publicly traded company because that's another uh, big growth play that uh, that you can make as far as stocks go. So anyway, September twenty second, Tuesday, battery day. I forget the time, but um, I want to say I want to say it's like one in the afternoon Pacific time, but not, I'll be off. I'll put the correct time down in the. Um, in the description so you have it and i'll put a link to it so that uh, you can watch it when it happens but um i think we're looking forward we're we're going to be looking at some really great things coming up so um i'll see you there hopefully um, i won't be there but i'll see you online <laughs> so i wish i could be there but i'm not going to be i didn't get invited so uh, so anyway um tune in uh and if you're not in the stock, you might want to really look at that, consider it, because uh, this is the future. So I think I think after Tuesday, people will, especially a lot of Wall Street investors, will see that the internal combustion engine is dead, dead.
dead technology. Um, it's 100 years old plus. It's time has come and gone and uh, that the future is electric propulsion. So um, I think Wall Street doesn't get it yet, but I think they're going to have a big eye opener uh, next week. So I'm looking forward to that. So anyway, uh, if you like the video, give it a like, give it a, a subscription or hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. And thank you. Leave a comment below. Let me, let me know what you think about battery day. What, what do you expect to happen? Um, did I, did I miss a few things? Some of the other speculations out there I didn't touch on. Um, do you think that that's going to be, um, talked about also Tesla tends to throw in some kickers and little extra surprises. For instance, the Cybertruck, they brought up the little quad, uh, when they did the semi reveal, they brought out the roadster. Uh, what do you think that's, uh, what do you think will be their extra little kicker at this event? So, Leave your, leave your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.